Hi there. Welcome to Come Rail Fan with me, episode 2. Today I'm going to talk about rail fan safety, staying safe while enjoying our hobby. My name is Steve Boyko. I'm going to cover a variety of topics related to being safe while watching and photographing trains. I'm going to talk about trespassing, or rather not trespassing, uh, how close you should be to the track, crossing safety, driving safety, where you should be, how to act around trains, uh, remote locations, and food, drip, water, and personal safety. If you uh, have any comments on this video, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks. First, about trespassing. Obviously, don't do it. You should respect railway property. You have to stay out of the railway yards. There's lots of train cars moving around. You may not know when a train car or locomotive will move from what direction. The standard rule is when should you expect a train and where? Anytime, any direction. So stay out of the yards. I know sometimes you know, there might be some tasty locomotive in there or a freight car that you really want to photograph but you don't have a good angle from public property. Well, too bad. Stay out. Don't go and uh, risk your life or risk being arrested. Um, also don't walk along tracks. So if you're uh, outside of a railway yard, say you're outside of the, outside of the city and uh, you need to get to a location, well you take a public road or uh, public access. You don't walk along the tracks because you never know when a train's going to come along and you uh, don't want to risk your personal safety. Obviously stay off bridges. Do not cross a railway bridge. I know there have been some situations where I've been in where I'd like to get an angle. The only way to get there is to walk across a railway bridge. Well, don't do it. It's just dumb. And um, nothing more needs to be said. And obviously, don't enter tunnels. I know you see some people shoot uh, trains coming out of tunnels. Those are fantastic shots. And if you plan them right with a good long zoom lens, then you can do it safely from a nearby crossing or a nearby public area that's not close to the tracks. But don't, uh, don't go walking into tra railway tunnels or hanging around the outside of railway tunnels because you never know when a train's going to come along and uh, it's just not safe. How close should you be to the tracks? Well, it's hard to say, but you have to keep in mind that rail uh, trains overhang tracks. So they overhang tracks by several feet in each direction. And if there's, a, say, a loose strap on a load or something like that, it can overhang by quite a bit. And that can really ruin your day or ruin your entire life. So I recommend you stay at least 5 meters or 15 feet away from the closest rail. Farther is better. And uh, you, you use your own judgment, but definitely be uh, as far away as you can safely be. My general rule of thumb is that if you're standing on ballast uh, that's part of the track, you're too close. You shouldn't be on the ballast at all. So um, there have been a couple of recent uh, unfortunate events that have happened. Uh, the Union Pacific 844 is an example where a woman was far too close to the tracks uh, recording the train and was struck by the steam locomotive and died. And uh, we don't want that to happen to anybody. Obviously, uh, their family is devastated. Uh, the train crew uh, suffers as well, and it is just nobody wants that. So definitely stay far away from the trains. Um, zoom lens is your friend. I understand that a lot of people rail fan with cell phones, and that's fine. You can take a great picture, but you're never going to get a close-up picture with a cell phone safely, so don't even try it. It just won't happen. Uh, cell phones are not capable of zooming in, at least at this time of recording. Uh, none of them have any decent lens on them that can that can actually uh, optically zoom for very much. So uh, you're not going to get a close-in shot uh, at, while keeping yourself at a safe distance. Um, when you're in a railway station, stand back from the station platform edges. Uh, it's usually marked how far back you should stand and definitely stand at least that far back, if not more. I know my experience has been in uh, some train stations in Europe where they have through trains going through. They don't even slow down. So you could have a train going through there at 60 miles an hour 
and uh, if you're anywhere close to the tracks, your your the wind is going to hit you from the train and blow you back. So definitely stay well back from the platform edges. And for uh, crossings with gates, obviously stay on the good side of the the gates, the non-track side of the gates, um, like cars do, and uh, you should be in pretty good shape. I personally like to stay on the um, leading edge of the uh, crossing. So say, for example, you're facing the crossing gates and the train is coming from the left, I like to be on the left side. That way the gates aren't in the photo and um, and uh, it's it's before the train enters the crossing, you can take your picture. I prefer that. Speaking of crossings, uh, a few ideas of crossing safety. Obviously, don't race the train to a crossing. Everybody knows that. I know you want to, you know, you don't want to leapfrog the, tr the train if you're doing a train chase. You want to leapfrog the train and get, get ahead of it to get a picture. But uh, don't race the train to a crossing. Um, don't go through the crossing when the gates are coming down or the lights are on. You know, the, the usual uh, driving safety tips that everyone should have. I've been in a few situations where I'm uh, chasing a train, I take my picture, and then I'll carry on to the next crossing and the train beats me to the crossing. Well, too bad. The train beat me to the crossing. I wait for it to go by and then carry on. Um, obviously, as I said, you stay on the non-track side of the gates. Uh, listen. You need to listen when you're at crossings, not just for trains, but for cars, because you need to be aware of cars around you. Say you're standing at a, at a crossing waiting for a train to come along. Um, you need to be aware of cars that are going to come by uh, often at the high speeds and uh, not really paying attention to you perhaps and not expecting any person to be there so uh, you need to be aware of the cars and you also need to be aware as soon as the gates come up the cars are going to gun it and they're going to go so you need to be out of the way and uh, make sure that you are not in the way of any vehicles if there are multiple tracks uh, be aware of uh, trains coming on a different track um, for example Winnipeg west of Winnipeg here there is a double track CN line where often you'll find a train stopped on one of the tracks. So when you're walking across, a, say, a, a private crossing where there's no gates, no indication of a train coming, you have to look both ways uh, as you're crossing each track to make sure that there's no train sliding up on the other side of the park train that you don't see. So be aware of that. Uh, driving safety. Uh, I think uh, you should understand uh, for driving safety that uh, you, you respect speed limits. You drive for conditions. Right now, for example, I'm recording this uh, on December 31st, so it's wintry and very cold outside, about minus 22 Celsius outside right now. So it's snowy, it's slippery. Uh, you can't be going at high speeds chasing a train. It's just not safe. It's not worth it. No train is worth getting an accident for. Uh, if you can, have a buddy so that uh, either you or your buddy is driving and the other person's taking pictures. That helps a lot in terms of uh, getting getting photos that maybe you, you uh, couldn't get if you were just driving solo and had to stop every time you took your picture. And obviously you, you shouldn't be taking pictures while you're driving. That's uh, not safe either. Now, as far as locations go, uh, you should choose locations that are reasonably safe neighborhoods. Uh, if, here in Winnipeg, there are most places in, in Winnipeg are pretty safe, so uh, I'm not really concerned. But uh, you should be careful if there are some areas of town where you really shouldn't be, uh, say, uh, alone, then uh, don't go there. And uh, you should tell people where you'll be so that they'll understand, uh, you know, if you don't show up, that uh, they'll know where to go looking for you. Um, if you're in a really remote location, Carry a GPS, not a phone, but an actual GPS device with you. And I'll give you an example of that. I was out at Uno, Manitoba, in western Manitoba. There's a lovely trestle there. Uh, and I went out there navigating with my phone. And I got to the location. I was lucky I had a train go over the tracks while I was there, uh, over the trestle while I was there. So I took my picture, took some video. And then when I went to leave, I realized that I had no service and no, therefore no map. And it took me a little while to figure out my way out of there. But uh, since then, I resolved to carry a GPS with me so that I will have map access.
Now, the other option is that uh, on some map programs like Google Maps on your phone, you can download the area onto your phone so that you will still have it even if you don't have, uh, say, um, LTE or whatever cell, cell access. You should still be able to navigate with a saved map on your phone. So either either do that or carry an actual GPS. And, of course, if you're in a foreign country, you your GPS may not have a map for a foreign company. For example, my GPS is only for North America, so I don't have any European maps, so it's useless to me in there. So when we're driving in Europe, typically we will rent a GPS from the rental company so that uh, we'll have a GPS that's appropriate. Uh, as far as other locations, overpasses, parks, those kinds of things are, are generally public areas that you can record from. Uh, overpasses, again, you have to make sure that there is actually a sidewalk. Um, there's a few overpasses here in Winnipeg where uh, it would be great to be able to stand on it, to be able to, to photograph trains, but the reality is there's traffic going by at 90 kilometers an hour or, you know, 55 miles an hour, and uh, there is no nothing but a thin shoulder and that is not safe and not worth risking your life o over. So choose a, choose a safe location. Now, as far as uh, being around trains, uh, obviously don't climb aboard or through trains. I'm talking about freight trains. If they're passenger trains that you've got a ticket for, that's different. But uh, stay off the freight trains. I've seen a number of photos of people who are clearly standing on top of a freight car while they're taking a picture of another train. That's uh, trespassing and unsafe, and don't do it. Um, riding on trains, freight trains, is stupid and dangerous. There, I said it. Uh, I, I know these uh, these people who post on Instagram or YouTube uh, about their videos and photos of being on board container trains or in boxcars uh, are popular, but it's stupid. Yeah, don't do it. And uh, I know, I don't know the name of the fellow uh, who was very popular on YouTube. Uh, he died uh, while uh, being around trains. And, um, you know, I don't want anyone anyone to uh, to die from this hobby. And uh, so stay off the freight trains. Uh, stay away from the ends of freight trains. It, that also follows beware of slack action. So, you know, when a, when a train stops or is about just starting, uh, there's a lot of slack in the couplers that uh, can run out. So... Sometimes uh, when they re the engineer releases the brakes, the slack will run out, and even though a train had been stopped, it might roll out, roll backwards uh, a few feet because of the little bit of slack in every coupler that, that runs out as it's say, sliding downhill. So you need to be aware of that and don't walk right behind the last car because uh, that slack action can get you. I saw that something like that almost uh, almost hit somebody in Macadam, New Brunswick years ago. There was a train that was stopped, and this ATV was driving through the yard, the rail yard, as they often did. As I was standing on a public crossing, but they were they were going around uh, going around the train on a crossing, and the slack ran out uh, just as they were going past it, and it just missed the ATV because uh, even though the train wasn't moving, the slack ran out and the uh they had almost it almost hit the ATV. So whenever you're there's a stopped train that you're walking around the end of, give it a wide berth going around it. Give it several feet at least. Uh don't just walk right by the coupler. And of course, as I mentioned before, watch for trains on other tracks. Uh if there are more than one track, then keep an eye out as you're coming be coming up behind one train, look at the next track, both directions, make sure there's nothing there. Um, as far as uh, food, water, etc., if you're out rail fanning for the day, obviously bring enough food and water and uh, bring a few water bottles and uh, be aware of where restrooms are If and because uh, if you're out for several hours, you're going to need to use the washroom somewhere, so uh, be aware of where, where a restroom should be. If you're out in, out in, in the, uh, the summer or even in the winter, you should be wearing sunscreen. Um, I admit I do not normally wear sunscreen in the winter, but I'm not usually standing outside for hours on end because it's cold in Manitoba. I don't stand outside for hours in the, in the winter. But uh, definitely in the summer, wear sunscreen. Carry bug spray if you're outside the, outside a city because uh, I know here in Manitoba, the bugs are pretty bad outside the city. So you definitely want to have bug spray on. Um, you, you have any medicines, of course, to bring those. Those are that's just general 
living advice. So uh, make sure you have enough food and water, and uh, if, especially if you're going to camp out for hours uh, watching trains. What to wear? Well, the next that's that's a, a good thing to think about too, because um, especially I, I think about it now because two days ago I was out uh, rail fanning in uh, the middle of Manitoba, and it was about minus twenty four, minus twenty five Celsius. Without the wind chill, the wind chill brought it well below minus 30 Celsius. So it was cold. So um, I had to dress appropriately. And uh, because I was dressed appropriately, I, I was able to stand out there for, for you know, half an hour. Um, so you start with wearing good footwear. Um, in the summer, you know, wear a good pair of runners or sneakers uh, or boots so that uh, if you're walking around, you don't uh, puncture your foot with anything that might be lying around near, near railway tracks because there's always uh, some debris around. And uh, in the winter, you know, boots with good traction is good. Um, should wear long pants usually most of the time, because it, especially unless it's super hot. Uh, keep the bugs away, keep the wood ticks away. Um, dress for the weather. So I'll give you an example of what I was wearing a couple of days ago when I was out in this, mi this freezing cold temperature. I was wearing winter boots. I had on heavy wool socks, so my feet were nice and warm. I didn't have any issues with that. I was wearing a pair of jeans. I probably could have put another layer on, but the backs of my backs of my legs were a little cold, but not too bad. Uh, on my torso, I had a t-shirt, I had a hoodie, and I had a winter parka. So my core was warm. I didn't have any issues there. On my hands, I had heavy um, heavy gloves, no, sorry, mittens, not gloves. I had mittens on, and I had one of those, uh, you know, those warm-up packs that you, uh, you shake them and they, and they give a little warmth. I had one of those tucked in each mitten. So I was pretty good in the hands. Hands are really one of the major issues because, of course, you need your hands to operate your camera. And I can kind of operate my camera through them, but not very well. I have another set of gloves that I, I sometimes use in the fall and the spring, uh, that provide some insulation, but they're definitely not good for the dead of winter. They're they're suitable only to about minus eight Celsius or so. So uh, those gloves I did wear a few times just for a minute or two to operate my camera. And then I switch back to the the mittens. So they they weren't too bad. And then I had a scarf and on to cut protect my neck. And on my head I had a toque, so my head was warm. My ears were warm. The only thing I did not protect that I should have protected was my nose. And uh, I yesterday I bought a balaclava so that I can cover my entire face. So when I, after I was out for half an hour, I came back in and my nose was cold and white and a little numb. So it was getting, uh, getting a little dangerous on my nose. So I've learned that lesson that I'm going to wear the balaclava on my face. Uh, it might look like I'm robbing a bank, but I'm going to stay warm and uh, protect everything. So um, obviously the opposite goes in the summer. If it's super hot where you are, uh, don't wear a lot so you don't overheat. Drink plenty of liquids. Um, one thing about mo things to wear when you're rail fanning, uh, I really recommend you don't wear a safety vest. I know some people do wear a reflective vest when they're rail fanning. I, I think it's dumb, and here's why. Uh, I think you I think you may be mistaken for railway personnel or an official who's supposed to be there when you're not. So you're going to concern the train crews. Uh, you're going to concern people around you. You're you're kind of impersonating a railway person when you're doing that. If you want to wear bright colors, great. That's nothing wrong with that. But actually wearing a safety vest, I think that's a bad idea. Um, so I really recommend against it. I don't wear a safety vest. I'm told by train crews that Generally, they can see rail fans anyways. You know, they're they're in a position of high visibility, so they can see rail fans, and it's not really uh, not really an issue for them. You don't need to wear the, the the vest to to be seen by them. So that's the end of my uh, my slideshow uh, and my uh, my talk on rail fan safety. Um, I think uh, the fundamental things that I would like you to take away from this are that. You need to be safe, safe first, train second. Uh, no photograph is worth risking your life over. And uh, I want you to come back from every trip 
safe and happy, have some good photos, and uh, be able to go back out for the next round. So thanks for watching and listening. And uh, my name is Steve Boyko. You can find me on the web at traingeek.ca. And uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>